Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. How do you go from a single seed to enough mustard to cover hot dogs that would encircle the globe? Mmm, that's good. And we're down on the banks of the Arkansas River to meet the guru of the garden, TV host P. Allen Smith. The petals are so beautiful and edible. Come along on a private tour of his beautiful 500-acre farm. Small town, big deal. <laughs> you know, our next story centers around why ancient pharaohs stored in their tombs for the afterlife. And Greeks and Romans used it as a cure for scorpion bites. <laughs> but you know what, maybe we should give them a more modern day uh, hint. I think so. So it's the number one condiment on most hot dogs, and especially if it's a Chicago hot dog. This is a story of a big city company working hand in hand with a small town to spice things up. This is Pluckman's Mustard. Located in Mantino, Illinois, about an hour south of Chicago. It's where the Plotman family recipe has been used to create their award-winning mustard for over 150 years. It all started when German chemist Moritz Plotman immigrated to the United States back in 1881. Within two years of living here, he bought Chicago-based premium mustard mills and started what's known today as Plotman's Mustard. Moritz was living out the American dream, and it all started with a wheelbarrow. He would walk around the streets of Chicago with a wheelbarrow and a ladle, and people would come out and ladle it into their bowls or whatever they brought out with. A lot of times, it was just a tiny mustard jar and spoon, and that's about the portion you got, a tiny spoonful. As production increased, so did the need for more space, and Plotman's moved away from the big city. Having their first-class mustard stand out among its huge competitors was also needed. Enter the barrel-shaped squeeze bottle. Plotman's introduced the yellow squeeze barrel in 1957, making their mustard the first successful squeeze condiment in the U.S. Get the cycle start. They're making mustard the same way now as when the company was first founded. Same formula, same recipe. They start out with well-matured yellow mustard seeds. Next, turmeric, salt, paprika, and onion powder are added to the mixing tanks of vinegar and water. Oh gosh, look. <laughs> vinegar. That's a lot of vinegar. The seeds are blended in and all mixed for about an hour. The slurry mixture empties into a stone mill and the remaining seeds are ground into a creamy paste. After inspection, it's poured into that famous barrel and voila. Oh, there it's going in, look. It's not gonna go meet its maker, it's gonna go meet its hot dog. On any given summer day, Pluckman's produces enough mustard to cover hot dogs that could encircle the world. Where'd Rodney go? He found the hot dogs. That's where I'm going. What I found was Marty Fay creating the classic Chicago hot dog. The first layer, this is critical, is a nice base of Plaquemines yellow mustard. And then you start with the relish. Oh, yeah. By the time I'm done, this is going to look so pretty you won't want to yeah. eat it. Okay. Oh, lots oh he'll want to eat it. Lots of onions. Off to the side here. You're like a hot dog artist. Oh, I've spent 62 years mastering this skill. So then, sport pepper. And then, Tomato. Oh, you gotta have tomatoes. You gotta have tomatoes. Otherwise, you're just fooling yourself. Then a spear. Oh, that's one of my favorite parts. A spear. Yeah. The secret is celery, celery salt. salt. Just a hint of it, <laughs> and there is the perfect Chicago hot dog. Oh man. Mmm. Yours is almost gone already. But Plotman's has more on its plate than the traditional yellow mustard. We have 16 different blends of mustard. 16? And we continue to develop. We have two more in the queue for this year. With a topic this appetizing, we might as well have a little tasting competition. I don't know what it is. Okay. Hand it to Marty. 
plum. It's a sweet. Did you double dip? No, I turned the oh, pretzel okay. upside just down. Just, just for clarity. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Big. There you go. Wow. Wow. I would have never guessed that. That one looks interesting. Yeah, that is. Chipotle? No. It's like I know There's what it is. There's a lot in here, so That's hot. It's, hard. it's getting hotter the longer it stays in there. Um, Jalapeno? Little. Okay. Think of Florida. Alligator? Citrus. Think a little Havana. Cuban? There you go. There were so many others like bourbon, Chicago fire, cranberry, and more. And while Plockman's certainly cuts the mustard in the creative flavor category, a couple of employees do the same with their mustard-inspired culinary skills. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> We were treated to kielbasa and bourbon balls, both made with mustard as a key ingredient. I can tell it's a hint of mustard, but mm -hmm. yeah, the mustard gives a little... Oh, uh, yeah. Like a little kick, a little interest. Pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little pop. That's good. Wow. So the next time you use mustard, either in a recipe or on a favorite food, remember how this company got its start. One man peddling his mustard in a wheelbarrow, greeting one customer at a time, and making his American dream come true. When we come back, P. Allen Smith crows about his chickens. And Jan learns a little about gathering eggs. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. You know, usually we tell you what small town we're in, but at the moment we are so far out into the country, we're not even in a small town. But today, our big deal is a person. Yeah, a best-selling author and a nationally recognized lifestyle expert. This renaissance man has also been sharing all of his knowledge with all of us on television for more than 25 years. His name is P. Allen Smith, or just Allen for short. He's all over TV with three different shows, not to mention nearly a dozen best-selling books. He's basically the guru of gardening. The purpose of this guard really is that I love to eat, and we love to promote <laughs> organic farming and organic gardening principles. So it shouldn't be surprising that his latest book is P. Allen Smith's Seasonal Recipes from the Garden. And you can just step out and you can gather some things for a meal, and that's what we're going to do for lunch, because I'm going to fix lunch for you. Oh, wow. We are? These are some of our onions. This is an old uh, heirloom variety. It's called a walking onion. I'm just gonna knock off a clump of these like that, and we're gonna use these onions in our soup. Let me smell. Yeah. Mm. Oniony, yeah, yeah. Alan's a farmer, a landscape designer, a conservationist, and a teacher. His classroom and where he does it all, right here at his home, Moss Mountain Farm, 500 gorgeous acres on the banks of the Arkansas River. Now, the nearest town is Roland, Arkansas, which is about 45 miles northwest of Little Rock. But the address might as well be Paradise. We love to mix things together, so you'll see a mixture of flowers and herbs and vegetables and fruits all growing in this same garden. One of the things that we like to do is farm to table, and we can serve a meal from this garden. Uh, right here in the walkway. Growing, in the walkway with candles and, and you've done lanterns it. and a tap. Yes, we've done oh. it. <laughs> yeah. My invitation was lost in the we're, mail. We're doers. At the center of it all, his home. It looks like it stood there for over a century, but Alan built it less than 15 years ago. He also designed this rose garden, inspired by those he saw while studying gardens in England. And in the spring, Thousands and thousands of blooming beauties cover what Alan calls Daffodil Hill. Flowers are everywhere you look at Moss Mountain. This is a variety called Garland Orange, and this is the first year we've trialed it, and I really love it. So this one's going to be asked to come back uh, into the garden, and we'll be invited back. It's a lovely guest. Uh, so we'll i got to figure out how you make the cut. <laughs> the flowers provide more than visual beauty. They even feed Alan. The petals are so beautiful and edible. So they're going to be a part of your salad. Oh, Wait. I have to try that. I have never eaten a flower. Ever? How was it? What did it taste like? It wasn't bad. Oh, yeah. 
You have this huge love and passion for the land, and for the animals, and for the food. Yeah. Where did it come from? I think it was just always there. My grandparents had farms, and my aunts and uncles had farms, and we had a farm. But he doesn't keep it all to himself. He opens up Moss Mountain to visitors, 4-H club kids because he was once one of them, and to the fans of his shows and books. I have a confession. I'm not sure this is the right time for that. Shall we call it priest? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a good grower. Like, I look at all this and go, oh, I, I don't know if I could ever do this. Green way. thumbs are made, not born. You work at it. You begin getting your hands in the soil and you begin to, to understand nature. And the failures teach you. I've learned more from failures than I have from successes. Mm. Yeah. It's a metaphor for life, really. It's, I can do this. I can you do can this. do it. All right. All right, let's go. All right. Before we head to the house, we have to stop at a very special place. If there's one thing that gets Alan crowing, it's his chickens. We keep about 35 breeds of heritage poultry here. So heritage, yeah. that's like old breeds? These are old breeds that go way back. These birds, called white-faced Spanish, go back thousands of years, but now they're endangered. That's one of the reasons Alan started the Heritage Poultry Conservancy. What we're trying to do is hatch as many of these as we can. So a lot of people say, do you eat the eggs? Only if we've hatched enough of the young for the next generation. That's a white bearded Polish. That's a little like Phyllis Diller. Yeah, that, that one is a kind of a wacky bird. <laughs> you can tell how well cared for oh, yeah. and how loved they are. <laughs> well, thank you. But yeah, I mean, even down to the music, I love to play classical music for them. Someone asked me, do you ever play heavy metal or hard rock for them? I said, no, I'd, I'm afraid we'd end up with scrambled eggs. <laughs> I've been a farmer for a long time, but even I didn't know there were so many breeds of chickens. This is the Appenzeller Silver Spangled Spitzhaben. Whoa, say that fast 10 times. Jan, you want to go check for some eggs? There yeah, this is the nest box. Oh, just there's kind a of... chick, there she's in there. Oh, she, oh. But well. then there's an egg under her. Uh oh, well then you get it out. Will she peck me? Uh, maybe, but it'll be just a little love peck. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I'm ready to leave this hen house. <laughs> Jan, why don't you take the eggs, because I'm going to have to get lunch started here soon. So let's take a look at those, yeah. Lunch is sounding good. And coming up, we'll make and enjoy a real farm-to-table meal. That is, if Rodney figures out how to set a table. How far off am I, Jan? <laughs> Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We're still at P. Allen Smith's Moss Mountain Farm. He's the big deal we get to rub elbows with. But the beautiful home he designed and built is a close second. It's time to go inside because Alan has plans. So I just wanted to show you one of the crafty projects that I've done for the fall. I thought it'd be fun for you all to make one of these. It's a centerpiece he created from a pumpkin and succulents that he grows right on the farm. You can set this outside on a porch as a, as a centerpiece. You can use it inside, put a few votive candles around it. It's sort of the perfect fall centerpiece that'll last a long time. Okay, so if I can just beat you, I'll feel okay. Are you looking at mine? No. Liar. I'm looking at his. Jen and I can make anything a competition. Ugh. So how are we doing? Oh, well, look at that. Ta-da! Look, that is just beautiful, Jan. And how did we do, Rodney? Well, well, that's really special. Which one do you like better? I really can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Alan wants us to be creative in his kitchen. We're doing a cream of turkey soup. And we're going to do a salad with a poached egg. We're going to use some onion. Rodney's job, chopping the green onion we picked out of Alan's garden. Rodney thinks onions are one of the major food groups. I, I'm with him there. I mean, they are good and good for you. And then Jan, if you would take a little bit of the thyme leaves off. I love a little thyme with poultry. While so I'm doing thyme, off. Rodney's stirring the pot, as usual. Let me show you what we're going to add now to this mirepoix, as it's called. It's called what? Uh, a mirepoix. Oh, that's a mirepoix. The, that's just the classic onion, carrot, and celery. OK. okay. Well, that's definitely my new word for the day. Well, there's a third of a cup of flour here, and I want you to just pour the milk in very slowly. This is a 
Looking An good. exercise for two, there you go. Beautiful. Now we have our ground turkey from the farm. And I'm gonna add the ground turkey. How are we doing over here? You still doing time? I'm still doing time. I have not been paroled yet. Is that enough, do you think? I think so. I don't think it takes a lot. Now we turn our attention to the salad with a special ingredient. Now I've got a little simple way to poach an egg I want to show you right over here. Alan has a poaching secret. A plastic sandwich bag. And we've got boiling water here. Maybe two minutes max. And then we'll, all we do is we just lift them out and cut them loose from the little plastic bag and then uh, put them on the salad. And remember those beautiful orange flowers we picked from the garden? And we're going to take some of our friend Mr. Marigold. Oh, wow. We're going to dress up the top of it just a little bit. Isn't that beautiful? <gasps> After it's adding locally grown Ralston rice, rice, it's time for soup. Well, almost. All right, Rodney, if you don't mind, if you could set the table, that'd be great. Okay? All right, let's get back okay. to Okay. Alan wants me to set this. This is going to keep me busy, and that gives Alan time to teach Jan more about his beloved chickens. Mm. Welcome to Chicken Chat. Today we're going to focus on the continental breeds. Yes, terribly excited. Oh, do tell. Yes, and the big fork goes on the left. From there, I'm guessing. That breeders have to breed to this standard, you know, the slope of the back. Deep soup first. Do you call yourself a chicken nerd? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can hear Rodney back there working. I hear dishes. <laughs> I guess Rodney could surprise us. Soup smells good. So, guys, what do you think? How did I do? Not bad, not bad. Why do we have soup bowls out here when we have soup bowls here? Well, I don't know, because the. You guys put them in here, so I put them place them. <laughs> now, the only thing I would have done is taken this as a dessert spoon and pulled it oh, up here yeah. and had that as a soup spoon. I can spoon. see how that's good rationale. And we got to have water glasses, and the water glasses go at the tip of the knife. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> let's that's eat. All I've yeah, let's say. eat. Now, the moment of truth on the soup. We might have jinxed you by helping. Mmm. Pretty good, mm. even if we did help. <laughs> it's Alan truly enjoys life. He loves growing things and his buried livestock. But mostly, he just loves sharing it. What brings you the most joy in life? When, you know, a kid has said, I've watched your show and it inspired me, and thank you so much for doing what you do. I mean, that doesn't get any better than that. Our time with Alan couldn't have been better. Wonderful having you all here. Oh, I'm a hugger, I'm a Absolutely. Hugger. Rodney. All yeah. too soon, it was time to say goodbye. Or was it? You know, I don't think Alan realizes we're serious about moving in. He should have been. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. And it is now official. When I grow up, I want to be P. Alan Smith. <laughs> but you're already grown up. Yeah, that's a problem. I haven't figured out that part yet. <laughs> I just want to know, do you think he has a problem with people visiting this slice of heaven he's created and oh, never wanting like to us. leave? I think I saw security. <laughs> yeah, they got our pictures and names. <laughs> <laughs> but going behind the scene at Plockman's Mustard, seeing that the original recipe is still made with care, and then eating it on hot dogs, for me, it doesn't get much better than that. I'm Rodney Miller. I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. Hey, that's my line usually. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. All right, just shut down production. Don't be looking at mine. No, I'm looking at his. I'm not looking at yours. Trust me. I'm not using you. Should be looking at mine. Using you as the as the standard bearer here. <laughs>